Hey everybody. What's up? Figure I just check in. I guess he ain't good. Still in a lot of pain from my shoulder, man. I go see the doctor tomorrow. I'm dying over here. You know, I took over 200 ibuprofen or 200. That's how much pain I'm in. Real talk. Gave me anaproxen, some muscle relaxers. Obviously, you know, that's not gonna cut it. It's gotta be the rotator cuff because the pain's in the back and I already know people that have had the same problem. You know, and that's where the pain is. So that means I'm gonna have to have operation. I gotta go into enemy territory. Oh boy, I'll be at their mercy. They'll probably have to knock me out to cut me open. Maybe not. I don't know. They they put me to sleep last time when they took a biopsy of my liver. And as soon as they stuck the thing in my stomach, I woke right up. I woke right up. Oh my eyes. They're like, oh shit, give him some more stuff. And then I went back out. Yeah. Well, you know, so they got my DNA and I've had blood tests before, so. But the gang stalker people told me that uh, my blood is, is, they can't use it or whatever, like after a certain, certain amount of time or something that it's no good or something about my blood. I remember them saying that. Yeah. What are you going to do, you know? It, it won't get, it's not, I don't think it can heal by itself. Rotator cup, you're gonna have surgery. Well, this guy over here, he had the same problem. He got surgery, he said he's straight now, he's good. He said, um, when you go see the doctor, if they diagnose you with rotator cup, then they give you a script for painkillers. And then after your uh, operation, they give you a shot and that's it, then you're done. And then he should be all right. He said he's doing all right. So after the operation, I should be all right, you know. Uh, of course, the hospital's 50 miles away. You know. How would I get there and back? Well, I'm going to have to call the transportation and talk to them about it, you know. That's what they say. Because usually you only get two hours. That's it. Give you two hours. I don't know if that's just medical transportation or if you pay. I'm not sure. Well, I figured I'd just check in with everybody. Hi, kids. You know, kids, if you're listening, you know, you guys see, you know, my concern for you because of these vaccines they're giving you, they're no good. See all your friends, they get autistic, brain damage and everything. You know, see, they're trying to force it. The government of California, I mean, the governor of California just signed a bill that mandates uh, that all, everyone get vaccines. I don't know if that includes adults, but they, they're trying to include adults, you know. So that's not right. Uh, that... that that's no secret that he signed that bill and there's gonna be a huge uproar within the next few days about that. There already is, there's already a huge uproar. Plus it's not a secret what's, what's in the vaccines. You got all kinds of whistleblowers coming out who worked for the CDC and everything else and they're just, they just blew the whole shit wide open. So these people can't, you know, I don't know how, I don't, I mean, it's hard to believe that Donald Trump and Trey Gowdy and Jason Chavez would allow this, these people to, continue to inject our children with these poisons, you know. Yes. 
I believe, you know, they're probably doing something about it, you know. So, um, if I, I wouldn't take any vaccine. I didn't take flu vaccine. But when I was in prison and I was going to go to that program, uh, they told me if you don't take the vaccine, then you can't leave. You can't get any program. You can't get early release. So they forced the vaccines on all the prisoners. You know, of course, nobody talks about that. But yeah, that's true, too. Damn, Skippy. Is that fair? Of course not. She tried to give me the vaccine. She said, I don't want that shit. She said, look, it's a vaccine. So what? I said, it's poison. She said, well, you don't take it then. You ain't going nowhere. No talk. I'm playing. I'm in wicked pain. The pain's in the back, like where your shoulder blade is. Right there. Horrible. I took over 200. I took 200 ibuprofen. Plus, I went through a bottle before that. It's been like two weeks since it happened. I'm still dying over here. You know. I'm not one to complain about pain. I mean, plus I got the toothache. and I'm not really a big complainer about pain, but, you know, if it's so bad that you can't sleep and, you know, just it's driving you crazy, then you got to try to do something about it. You know? Well, yeah, I guess they give you shots, too. Instead of a script, you can get a shot. I don't know what, I mean, I don't know what's more effective, you know. Well, yeah, the CDC, their they, their their whole shit's been blown wide open. These people can't. They're not going to continue what they're doing. I mean, there's so many people just just blowing them out of the water. I mean, all those people should really be arrested, I believe. CDC should be closed down. Plus, another thing is that um, the CDC is part of the federal government. We know that the federal government is a separate entity. It has nothing to do with it, with uh, corporation in the United States. So the federal government and CDC is either two separate corporations or two parts of the same corporation. And the United, uh, United States is another corporation or a corporate derivative of the three city states how we want to look at it. So that means if it's a corporation, it can be sued. So all these people where their kids turned autistic, now it's going to be proven that the vaccines are poisonous. So all those people will be able to uh, sue the CDC and the federal government. Damn Skippy. Hello. Coming back to Jamaica. So that was my plan. I came up with, well, if everybody makes this huge class action suit against them, uh, it'll be so huge, there's no way they could pay because they're a bunch of greedy parasites and already bled us dry for every penny they could. Plus, they stole all the gold and everything else. So, uh, they won't be able to pay. You understand? And if anybody comes to their rescue and pays for them, then they'll, they're going to expose themselves as the enemy. You know? So, that's like... It's like if you're part of a, uh, a gangster family, whatever, and someone and you got a million dollar bond, and someone comes to bond you out with a million dollars, uh, obviously the police are going to look at that person and say, well, he must be on the same team. You know? so. That's why they call me a light bringer, because I am the light bringer and I'm the great redeemer. So what do I do? Well, I try to illuminate all shadows all, where all these people hide in the shadows, you know. And get away with all that shit. So I blow them out of the water. I illuminate them. And I utilize other people, you know, the work they do. That's why I'm Satan. I'm center spirit. So I showcase everyone else's work. You understand? So I illuminate all the dark corners and the shadows. And then at the same time, I offer an avenue of redemption for those people. So if you want to try to do the right thing and achieve salvation, then you can. If not, then you don't, you know, but... Uh, either way, the line in the sand gets drawn. That's why Aerosmith made the album, Draw the Line. That's why I was posting all that shit about Aerosmith, you know, all the, all the music by Aerosmith today, because that's what it means, draw the line. I, I'm, I draw the line in the sand. I do. You know. I draw it. 
And that's what I'm doing right now. Because now what's going to happen? Well, now you're going to have this big uproar about the vaccines. And now you're basically going to have a, like what's people going to have to choose sides. You want to be on the side of righteousness or you want to be a, on the side of scumbags, you know. The corporate structure of dirtbags, you know. And then everyone's going to see which side you're on so that you can't uh, lie or you can't perpetrate some bullshit that you're trying to do the right thing because everyone will see that you're a dirtbag. You understand? Hello. Come on back to Jamaica. What's up, Jamaican people? What's up, man? You must be bugging out, right? That your guy, your jaw guy is a white boy. It is what it is. Imagine what the Middle Eastern people are saying that I'm their Mahdi and I'm a white boy. I mean, you think they ever expected some white boy to come along? Well, that's not really true because in the Quran, it does say that uh, the, the Mahdi will have fair skin and uh, brown hair. But then there's a discrepancy, discrepancy where it says red hair because uh, R8's negative bloodline has red hair. But I don't have red hair. I have brown hair. You understand? So, I don't know. It is what it is, I guess. So guys, I got the song almost done. The song is pretty much done. I got a new song. Voice, if you're watching, got a new song. But I'm I'm in a lot of pain, so it's hard for me to practice. And you know, if I get these, I'm going to see a doctor tomorrow. If I get these painkillers, then I'll be able to finish it. You know, and record it, post it. Um, Simon Cowell, uh, how you doing, man? Uh, you got a nice family there. Tell your family I said hello. And, uh, I believe that you possibly read what I wrote, the joke about, uh, everybody, this is, this is what I wrote, everybody, because maybe you didn't see it. I wrote, um, what did I say? I said, well, you know how sometimes there are people come out, they can't sing, you know. It's just a disaster, you know. So, <laughs> this is what I wrote. Simon, my ears are bleeding and you're not going to Hollywood. Next, Paula, Paula Abdul trumps up. What about our vote? Simon, never mind. Simon. Hey, Paula, do you do you believe that that guy that used to work at the Apollo used to wear all those crazy costumes and come out with a horn and the siren would go off and he'd come out with a cane and pull the people off stage? Believe that guy's still available? We should have our people call his people, tell them to come down next week for an interview. Paula, we? First you say our, vo our vote doesn't count. Now you say we. You funny sometimes, Simon. Simon, whatever. Simon, hey, Paula, give me a kiss. Paula, no. I don't know if you guys ever read the thing I did. Uh, I wrote Lucifer goes to Rothschild's house for dinner. I did that. That was pretty funny, I believe. I did a couple other ones. I did a lot of them, actually. And I, I wrote a whole uh, comedy skit, too. Uh, Simon? I wrote a whole, I got a whole comedy, a stand-up comedy act I wrote. I don't have it here with me. It's back in Kentucky, but I have to go back and get it. I had, Simon, I got this many notebooks full of my work. What do you see on the internet? That's nothing. I got two, three times that work that's on the internet, written in the notebooks. All kinds of poems and sacred writings and all kinds of shit, man. That's shit. Yeah, real talk, Simon. So uh, CDC is going to be facing the music here within the next few days, I would imagine. And then hopefully they'll investigate that, uh, that uh, the story of the Homeland Security transporting all the bird flu and shit like that, that they dropped from the aerosol planes. You know, uh, hopefully they look into that, you know, because apparently they were caught red handed, you know, delivering trailer truck 
driving around with a trailer truck full after a trailer truck full of bird flu. I mean, I believe that should be, you know, investigated. And if it was like I said, uh, President Trump, you watch this? I probably will. Uh, if you watch this, President Trump, it was up to me and I were you. I would close all borders immediately. I wouldn't let one anybody leave the country or ex- exit or enter the country. After what happened with the bird flu, you got people driving around with huge truckloads of bird flu and you're going to let people come in and out of the country? Nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't until that whole situation was cleared up and all the people involved were held accountable and you got to the bottom of what the fuck is going on. You know, never mind Muslim people and all that shit. That's just liberal posturing a bunch of garbage just to create chaos. Never mind that shit. Remember I told you, President Trump, today in the the post, I said that, uh, you know, you got to, we got to travel through the valley of parasites to get to the mountaintop. You understand? Are you a Satan or are you, a, you know, I mean, you know, I, I'm giving you all the, the, Support I can give you. Uh, see, we're 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 f- <clears throat> okay. I, I you know I'm basically a fallen angel. You know what what is a fallen angel? Well, we came into the program to save to save mankind from the virus that is injected into the program. You know, so we that's why we fell. Or we didn't fall. We just left. We went in. We made the sacrifice. It's not we didn't get thrown out of nowhere or. It was a we volunteered, do you understand? There's no thrown out of nowhere. You know, that's a bunch of garbage. Perpetrated by the church. Pope doing a good job. If you watch, Pope, all right, keep up good work, man. Um, see, and then, then you got the people that are uh, trying to villainize Masons or whatever. Okay. You know, the bottom line is this, that there's good apples and bad apples in every basket, okay? So anywhere you find unity, division will uh, spawn because it's a bipolar establishment. You understand? So even if you look at any organization that's involved in whatever, uh, there's there's good apples in there, but they're threatened, you know, they're been overcome by the bad apples. You understand? That's why I believe in transformation instead of just total destruction and wiping everything out because... The person that is involved in doing, involved in creating the worst threats, propagating the worst threats, has the most power to get rid of it. You know, to defuse the threats. You understand? So you know that's wisdom. You know, sometimes you gotta you know just just destroy everything. You know, and like I said, uh, so what I was trying to say was that we're fallen angels. So we came into to the program to save mankind from the virus, the vile spirits of Jehovah. You know. So, uh, you know, we're in the trenches, you know, so it's up to us to every once in a while, what, look in the past, we defended Europe against culturalist hordes. That's the same thing that's happening now. So who's going to defend Europe against the culturalist hordes? Who's the, what's the culture, culturalist hordes? That's the migrants. That's the dulcie based hybrid people that are created, whatever. And then, uh, you know, uh, then why well, I did it again when I was Hitler. You know, I did it when I was Alexander Gray. I did it again when I was Hitler. And now it's time to do it again. You know, we got to clean out the trenches. You understand, everybody? We got to clean out the muck and the mire. We're in the trenches. You know, I stood by you. Now you should be standing by me, you know. And my stars, too. Somebody should go immediately and remove those stars, okay? They're surrounded by fucking scumbags, all right? They're under all kinds of threats. They, they hold their clones at the cloning center and tell them, if you fuck around and don't do what we tell you, we're going to electrocute your clone, you're going to have a heart attack. That's why all these people die of heart attacks. That's why. Okay. That's the reason. George Carlin, this person, that person. So someone needs to go and rest, take all the stars that are in Hollywood, take all those people, put them in a safe place, get them away from all their handlers and all the other fucking scumbags that are surrounding them, and then go to the cloning center and secure the cloning center and uh, what's, you know, secure that place. You know, the military needs to go in there and secure the place and all their clones, whatever, uh, they need to be, you know, make sure they're safe, you know. But, you know, that's not rocket science to figure that shit out, you know. I mean, you shouldn't have to have me tell you that. Look, what, look at the Super Bowl. 
Now, don't blame Lady Gaga because I told you she's under threats and she's surrounded by these dirtbags and she doesn't do what she's told. They're going to electrocute her clone. They're going to kill her or they're going to put a lizard proboscis in her eye and turn her into a mimic and whatever. OK, she's under all kinds of threats. So she has to do what you know, she's doing what she's told. You know? OK. So you can't blame. Don't blame Lady Gaga. Well, what was there? I mean, you got the deer. They made a fucking picture of a deer with the candles. I mean, then they then they did some other shit. It was all to glorify the enemy, the deer people. I told the reptilians and the greys, okay, the deer people are trying to overrun you. Okay, you need to kick these motherfuckers to the curb, you know, or whatever. They're trying to overrun you. They're trying to take all the glory for everything and they want to get rid of you. They want to take over. So, like I said, it's basically war. You know, like jihad. What's jihad? It's a holy war. What's a holy war? Well, it's culturalist hordes against the Gentiles. So go back. What do you see? Well, what did NATO do? Well, they attacked all Gentile countries and destroyed them the best they can and killed as many Gentiles as they possibly could. So they represent the culturalist hordes. They represent the um, the hybrids, you know, or they represent three kings, the reptilians, the greys, and the deer people. That's who they represent. That's the slave masters. So NATO is under the threat from the slave masters. NATO, if you're a soldier, that's where your orders come from, from the three kings. And then any other kind of two cents that, you know, the secret societies want to put in there or the temple bar three city state whatever but now that shit's falling apart because now got the crown on my side and i got the vatican on my side so if i got the vatican on my side that means the jesuits are on my side so what does this mean it means the templars are on my side it means the jesuits are on my side it means the vatican's on my side it means the crown's on my side so what do you got left you got freemasons you got temple bar knights of malta and Garners and uh, Council of 13 and uh, Council of Foreign Relations or whatever it's called. So if we could, uh, you know, um, incorporate all, get all those people that come over the correct side of righteousness, then we'd be in good shape, you understand? And then if we could get uh, peace with Russia and North Korea and um, China and Japan and Eastern Ukraine. And then, you know, if you support Eastern Ukraine, because they love Russia. So all those proxy armies over there in Ukraine uh, or NATO forces, uh, they'd be, all, you know, they, they, you know, probably say, well, let's go home, you know. You got all these missile bases you put over there surrounding Russia trying to provoke Putin the best you can, shot down his plane, you kid blew up his generals and everything else, you know. I mean, it, if, it, if it wasn't for Putin having such a level head and being such a great leader, uh, the whole world would have been destroyed by now, you know. That's the bottom line. Look how hard they pushed Putin and tried to provoke him. Now they made the false flag blow up target practice Saudi ship. That was a bunch of garbage. Another false flag garbage. They're trying to create sympathy to attack Iran, you know. So as far as I'm concerned, Iran's my ally. You know, all these countries are my allies. I don't care about the government because the government doesn't serve the people. The government serves themselves. So the government, I don't give a fuck about the government. Who cares? I care about the people. So that means Russia's on my side, China's on my side, Japan's on my side, Eastern Ukraine's on my side, North Korea's on my side, uh, uh, Iran's on my side, Iraq's on my side, Syria's on my side. Uh, Libya's on my side, all, the, all these countries and some Baltic states too. And the, all, they're all on my side. The people are on my side. I don't care about the government. They're a bunch of scumbags. Who cares? They're globalists. They're traitors to traitors and treasonous scumbags. They're traitors to humanity. They're globalists. Just look at the town and city councils. Those are traitors. Those people should be rounded up immediately, locked up immediately. They're trying to destroy America from within. I shouldn't have to explain. I mean, come on, guys. No. 
I don't have to explain everything, but I'm doing the best I can, you know. I try to explain things in a simple manner because, uh, you know, it's hard for us to accept information because we're so brainwashed and programmed. Me too, you know. As I say in AA, they say, don't ever say you, always say we or us, you know. Because as soon as you say you, then you put people on defensive, like, oh, me, what, you're great and I'm a scumbag, you know, you know what I'm saying? Let's always say we or us. Don't ever say you, you know. But I say you sometimes because I'm the central archetype, so I really can say, you know, like Satan is not a name, it's a description, and everybody can go by the name Satan if you're a Satan. Uh, you know, if you uh if you're a Satan, how I say, you know, we're all supposed to we're all supposed to question, we're all supposed to challenge, we're all supposed to ask what for. We're supposed to want to be ourselves and be different from the next. You know, that's a Satan. So if that's what you are. And you could walk around and say, what's your name? Oh, my name is Satan. I'm a Satan. You know? Then nobody can enslave you and create a fictitious bonded account in your name to create, you know, use it to barter with or whatever. That's what the dollar is back with too, you know, everybody. With us. Our souls. Because each, each of our souls are worth $50,000. But I don't have a soul. I don't have one. I'm a, I have something, but it's not what everyone else has. Yeah. Like black people, why did why is the uh, vaccines target black people? Because black people uh, are most likely a, an original pure Gentile race, you know, and uh, they don't they don't have the same chromosomes. So the GMO foods and the uh, other depopulation uh, efforts that they engage in. Uh, doesn't affect them. So that's why they create these vaccines to specifically target black people. That's why they created AIDS to target black people. Uh, that's why they created... Uh, look at how many black people have diabetes. You know, all these diseases are created in a lab. They're all patented and they all have cures. You know. So everybody, I just figured I'd check in with you. Say hello. You know, just a little check in. I made a video for a few days, you know, so I got the song coming up. All the lyrics are done, you know. It's pretty good. Grateful Day, you're watching. Uh, should be coming out within the next few days, new song. Bob Weir, what's up, Bobby? All right, everybody, I'm going to let you go. You know, I'm suffering over here and just... Trying to get a lot of rest. And just trying to write this song, but every time I play my guitar, I'd be in severe pain, but I still do it. I always suffer through it, you know. <laughs> Been practicing the song every day, you know. Trying to play it pretty decently. Because everybody, don't forget, I didn't play guitar for 20 years, you know. So I just picked, recently picked it up again. You know? All right, everybody. See you later. Solid. Okay, everybody. Take care.